Hello again and welcome to the last leg of Wednesday's Daily Rundown. If you could hear the conversations we're having in the break, we should really be airing this, but we won't. Um, right, even I don't know what's going to happen next, not that I ever really know what's going to happen, because it's time to look at some of the more unusual stories that will be making today's news. So first cab off the rank, police in the east German town of Halberstadt investigated a suspicious humming object and brought in the bomb squad. They evacuated 90 people from a gambling hall and closed off the street. Residents heard a strange noise coming from the rubbish bin in the gambling hall and it turned out to be a sex toy. Over to you, Clayton. <laughs> You're a comedian. Why, this why is, this you, is why a you trying, why to you. Why are you the sex toy at me? It looked like a sex toy. <laughs> like it was mine. Um, <laughs> well, we, we've what not we said. We don't know whose it was, do we? This is meat and drink to a comedian, this kind of story, isn't it? Um, a sex toy in a bin. Closing off a street, cordoning off, getting the bomb squad in. What sort of sex toy was it? We don't have that it information. It vibrator if it's holding. It must be something that was making not a humming noise. Not okay. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a connoisseur of these objects. And that's why we came to you. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, because uh, I obviously know. <laughs> you're our young online media consultant. You're our sex toy consultant. That's how we it want is, to It know. needed to be looked at, but why would someone throw it in the bin? Are they broke it? Low expectations. How can you? <laughs> High it's expectations. It's going back to me. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see? Did they break it and threw it in the bin? What, Who knows? What, what's the story? Did they break it? I don't know. I suppose it could have been worse if they'd been going home and the bus and it had gone off. <laughs> That'll happen at an airport next, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. It's bound to. It's bound it's to. Good. Clear the airport. You won't be the person that comes out with the vibrator. No. Sorry, everyone. I left the batteries in. You don't want to be that person, do you? Because it's going to make national oh. tally, because of the way of the world with the terrorist thing at the moment. Yeah. It's national paper, isn't it? It's true. What's the worst thing you've discovered in r rummaging through your, your bins? <laughs> I don't really remember. I'll be honest with you, you're, you're setting him up here, because you're saying rummaging through his bins. Like, like, he's going to go, oh, I found this... Di no, no, you said my bin, didn't you? No, no. You've seen through my <laughs> evil plan. He's trying to trick you. He's trying to find out what's in your bin. <laughs> Nothing, just some crisp packets. That's fair all enough. I'm saying. OK, that's, well, that's fair enough. I'm not sure if I believe you, but we'll move on. Uh, next story, it's the gang of criminals. They've been jailed for a total of 11 years after they nicked £20,000 worth of jammy dodgers. The five-man gang stole the biscuits from a factory in South Wales after tricking a security card pretending to be a DHL delivery man. Their sentences ranged from 12 months to 44 months, and the biscuits were never recovered. Would you do time for a jammy dodger? No. No? What no. chocolate bar would it take to up the ante for you to, you know... Milky Ways. Milky Ways, right, Kay. Love Milky Ways. Can, can, sorry, can I just say something here? I don't think they were stealing them to eat them all. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, they, what, the we don't know. know. I don't think they went into court like, ah, oh, where are they? I don't know. <laughs> I think you, I think you take a few for yourself, don't sell on the rest. Yeah, you, you would have to. Yeah, you might steal them, you might not want them. True. Sorry, and if you want, if you were going to steal them, just do them from the shop, not a big crate load from, a from so the shop. Are, you walk along the street, it's happening you know, mid crime, the van's open, and all you see is thousands of Milky Ways. Would you uh, be tempted? Do you like Milky Ways? I love Milky Ways. I think they're a rip off. Because the two, there's nothing in them. Oh, I love them. I like saying heavy. You feel like you've got your money's worth. They're a bit... They're like, they're like before a Mars bar, I'll have a Milky Way to get myself ready. <laughs> Do you know like what I Yeah. It's a yeah, like, bush. Like a salad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a Mars bar, a little Milky Way. Just, oh, I'm right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can really enjoy it. Fair enough. I'd, yeah. I don't think I'd steal a massive load of Milky Ways. So you're honourable and you don't have sex toys. This is a very... I'd steal the money, person. then get the... Clayton. Would I steal? Would I steal? No. Your stealing, choices? stealing's wrong. Stealing is wrong. Unless, unless you get away with it. <laughs> right. It's really good then, isn't it? It is, isn't it? No. Well, like the is it the Hatton Garden? There's one bloke still on the run, isn't there? And they don't know who he is. Right. There's one bloke. You know the Hatton Garden, the jewellery house. Yeah, yeah. Thing? yeah. Yeah. There's one still missing. Okay. And they don't know who he is. They've got nothing about him at all, and he's got ten million. I suppose it would be easy to find who's perpetrated the Jammy Dodger crime because they'd probably have a trail of crumbs now, like, you know, Jammy Dodger. Yeah, I mean, you can hide money face. under your mattress, but yeah. there's so many Jammy Dodgers under your mattress. <laughs> it's a recipe for disaster, it isn't is, it? It is, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it is, okay. yeah. It, well, 
We'll leave that one there and go on to our next story, and it's about investigators. They're spying on the pictures of boastful rich kids on Instagram to see if their parents are hiding costly assets such as planes or yachts in order to dodge tax or divorce payouts. Um, that seems like we're back in the previous story now. Checking kids' Instagrams to see what's in the background if daddy's got a yacht and hasn't declared it. Well, what's the most embarrassing thing that could be in the back of a selfie if it was taken in your house? Uh, that broken dildo that was found in the bin in Germany. <laughs> see, I knew we'd get it out of him eventually. <laughs> um, me eating Chris most probably. <laughs> my son's took an Instagram of me in the background like that with scampy lemon knickknacks. No, don't do the picture. Um, that's a bit ridiculous, isn't it? Mm. In the background, a boat. Well, it, it's how the other half live, isn't it? Yeah, but rich kids are like that. They'll just take random selfies of, oh, look what dad got me, nice Rolex watch. I'd love to be born rich. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it? be awesome. Wouldn't it be great? <laughs> well, it depends you know, on like, what you're like, going to pay. All right, your name's Clayton. All right, all right, Dad, what's your name? Tom Cruise. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Just be great, wouldn't it? Well, this, this, there is an example here. There was a recent success against a man who claimed to have no assets, only to be exposed when one of his children published a photo aboard his 17.5 million yacht in the Bahamas. <laughs> that's just that's showing off. That you, you, serves you right in a way, then, isn't it? What if, yeah. he, what if he ate his son? <laughs> <laughs> you would probably have bought a new one. Yeah. What, what, did he go to prison for it? It doesn't say what happened, but, he, but, but certainly he was exposed. Uh, he claimed he had no assets and this was proven. So something would have happened. There would have been some repercussion to that. I it's suspect weird, a hefty know. fine, but maybe. I know, yeah, that's how I was going to say. Because the picture in the background, I could have a picture of me with Big Ben behind me. It doesn't mean it's mine, <laughs> does it? <laughs> so, you know, I saw a Bugatti Veyron in LA. I took a picture of it. It's not mine. <laughs> Well, you, later on in life, you might find out you're going to get done for tax tickets. I saw Maybe. someone very similar parked outside this very studio this evening, so I'm not sure I believe you. Well, it's a good car, though, isn't it? I don't know, cars. <laughs> no. Do you like cars? I wouldn't know one I car. I wish I didn't like there. cars, but I do like cars. You know, a couple of times I've once been picked up by a friend, had no recollection what the car looked like, and actually got in the wrong car. <laughs> OK, you won the lottery tomorrow, you won £10 million. Pounds. What car are you going to get? I don't get tell me you're going to... I'd get a chauffeur and be driven. What car would the chauffeur drive? Don't care. What colour? <laughs> Blue. Sporty or luxurious? I wouldn't know the difference. As long as it worked, had four wheels and had uh, lots of in inside entertainment, I'd be fine. I I I'm a bit driving Miss Daisy. I mean, I'm getting to that age anyway, but I like the idea of being driven. Just, yeah. T take, let, let the, not let the train take the train, let the chauffeur take the train. That's what I would do. Yeah. I'm not a Top Gear fanatic, but I do like sitting in I don't like Top Gear. No, I'm no. not a car fanatic, but when you see a nice car... Yeah, mm. it's appreciated. It's the first thing... An Audi R8 went through Manchester City Centre the other month, right? And the bloke driving it, you know, the word I can't describe on this <laughs> programme, but as he floored it, every bloke went, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Pushed my wife out of the way, you see you later, love. Ooh. Was there nice. was a programme on last night called Drive. It's a new celebrity driving show where they're having to drive all these different cars and bangers and stuff. And um, it was, I actually found that quite entertaining. I'm not a driver, I'm not a big fan, but it was fun to see the likes of Louis Walsh get covered in mud <laughs> as he got rammed from the back by another sort of rally car. <laughs> it was worth it for that alone. <laughs> right, so we'd all buy a car then if we won the money. Oh, yeah. Right, okay. Oh, yeah. Definitely. But declare it so if our daughters or sons decide to take a an illicit selfie with it in the background we hadn't declared it would have to hey, make if sure. If I had a car like that, I'd take a selfie with it. I don't care. <laughs> if I had a Bugatti Vera, I'd declare it so everyone knew I had it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I'd fair. make a point. Front I'll page ad. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Okay. Right, to our last story now. And this concerns booze. We've covered everything tonight, really, haven't we? Uh, wine is a major part of Italy's history. So it makes sense that kids over there could soon be getting lessons about this important part of their heritage, how to drink wine. Politicians are pushing for a new law to get wine in the curriculum, aiming to teach kids how to enjoy alcohol without abusing it, as well as giving them information about their culture. But they won't actually be drinking the wine. The, they'll be laying the groundwork for when they're a little bit older. What's the point? No point. When you say teach them, they're not going to be one of these pompous... Oh yes, yeah, sniffing the pit. claw. Oh, oh yes. That. Alcohol, so. alcohol is to get drunk and drunk only. Why do people make it an art? 
It is an art form it's in, not. in Italy. It's, I think for wine. If, if I bring wine up to a wine, I've got this wine. I've done this before. I've got this wine here. It's just like, it's only 3%. It's low alcohol. Oh, I didn't realise. You'll have to take it back. <laughs> Surely orange juice, you don't get drunk of orange juice, but it tastes nice. But wine is part of the herita heritage of that country. So it's, it's encouraged them to learn about the history of one of their biggest exports. You're not convinced, are you? No, it's just it's, alcohol's to get drunk. Okay. No. There's no other, there's no other, this, I've been out with couples of four, and me, I'm a, they're like. So it could uh, be anything. BK, <laughs> or whatever, just it knock It could be tarps, mess, as long as it gets you drunk, that's all. Well, that's what it's for, isn't it? Yeah. Take alcohol, 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 alcohol yeah. Yeah. what's the point of having it? Do you agree? Yep. So there's no, no need. Get drunk. You're half cut now, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've not had a drink for a few weeks. I'm not teetotal, but I just have the occasional one now and again. But like I say, if I drink, I'm there to get drunk. <laughs> so it's not meant to be seen as a cultural thing. It's meant to no. be as a way to get from A to, well, L. Yes. OK, fair enough. Well, I think we've learned a lot about you this evening. I think so. Maybe, maybe I've a lot more. about myself, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like therapy, hasn't it? Yes, it has, actually. Well, we'll, we'll join hands and talk about this again another time, but we've got to leave it there. Thank you to all my guests this evening, Clayton Jones, Chris Grogan and Nick Gleave. Dan is back tomorrow with Thursday's Daily Rundown. So from everyone here, it's good night and we'll see you again soon. Night-night. <laughs>